Well, hello, folks, and welcome back to Fisting Java Save the Universe. I am Fist25, and it has certainly been a long time since I've even attempted to make a video. But with uh, the lack of content and uh, the waiting for Patch 3.23 and the multitude of so much fun we've all been having in Star Citizen in the last six months, I finally decided to get off my butt and make a video because I'm finally excited about something. And that is a brand new ship. Yes. One of the very first videos I ever released on YouTube was of the Anvil Hornet. And it still remains my favorite medium fighter out of all of them. So let's go take a look at the brand new Anvil Hornet. Wait, that's the old Hornet. That, that's the old Hornet. Cut. Cut. Jawa, did you, did you call the new Hornet or the old Hornet? Whoops. Oh. Sorry, Fist. Can you call the new Hornet, please? Calling the ship now. I think that's what the folks want to see. Thanks, Jawa. And there she is, folks. The Anvil F7C Mark II, the brand new Hornet for your use in Star Citizen. Let's roll that intro. All right, thanks for sticking with us through the intro. Uh, I kind of want to do a preliminary ship review on this new Anvil Hornet Mark II. The lore behind it is uh, it's the newest of the Hornet line released by Anvil Aerospace. And this is really just a first look. I'm testing it out. I just want to fly it a little bit, kind of show you guys some of the capabilities of it. I've already done some modifications and upgrades to it because uh, I was flying it last night in the new event, which we will talk about in a little bit uh, of how to upgrade this F7C to Mark II to possibly an F7A Mark II if you do all the events. Uh, I, I believe it's called Overdrive. Anyway, that being said, it is definitely a different look from the stock Hornet, uh, the, the Mark One, I, I should say, instead of a stock Hornet. It has kind of a new look in it, and I really like it. It's a little more angular. I, I actually like this paint scheme of the blue and the white. It's a little more, I, I hate to say futuristic because we're playing a space video game, but I like it. It's more modern, I guess. It looks more like I pictured the Hornet to look. And it's going to look even better when we're flying this thing around. I do have a size 3 nose gun up here. Um, you can fit the standard uh, Hornet chin turret up here that fits, I believe, two size 2s. But it only comes in white, and I didn't want to throw off the aesthetic. Uh, believe me, that actually matters to me. Uh, believe it or not, I should say. Up top, there is kind of a ball turret type of deal. There are two of those that uh, exist in the game right now. One is for the standard F7C Mark I that does fit on the Mark II. And then there's one just for the Mark II, which I believe is the one that's actually installed on here. We're going to go over that when we get to the loadout section. Uh, but overall, the intakes are a little bit different. It feels like it's a little bit longer, or at least it looks like it, just the way it's kind of designed, but it does look very similar. Notice uh, a difference here now. On the wing, I have a size 4. That is a laser cannon on there. Uh, that is a CF447 Rhino, I believe. At the back, it still has that pretty classic... Uh, like wishbone type of uh, tail fin going on uh, with the classic big giant F-16 like single engine Hornet engine with uh, some variable exhaust nozzle, you know, hopefully, hopefully you can vector that thrust. I, I don't know. I don't really think the game does that right now because we have maneuvering thrusters like right here. 
Uh, it does have some stabilators going on, and overall, it's just the look looks like it's, it's a flyer, right? Tricycle landing gear configuration. Um, and again, another size 4 gun on the starboard side. It's a symmetrical ship. So yeah, folks, that right now, that gives us one, two, three, four, five uh, guns on this thing. And right now, I have it all in laser. The Hornet, if when you get it, when you buy it, and yes, you have to have the privilege of buying this. Uh, it, it's not an upgrade from the Mark One. It's you have to buy the Mark II. Uh, I think I paid Warbon 160 for it, but I did get the upgraded paints, so it was like 170 something. I think standalone's 175 if you have store credit. But enough talking. Let me throw my helmet on, and we're gonna take off here from Bigini Point, and we're gonna go fly this thing around. Stand by. All right, helmet is on. Uh, one thing I did want to mention here is uh, it does come with storage. And uh, quick tip, if you didn't know this, your friends can store stuff in your ship and then you can access it. It's kind of a weird storage thing that actually works in between ships. I don't think you can do that on the inside of the ship yet, but it works doing this. So this thing is able to hold a lot. 250K, uh, micro SCU. I mean, I have a gun in here. I have a freaking rail gun. I have an, L an FS9, some magazines, things like that. So there's definitely some, some storage in here. All right, let's climb up into this cockpit. Go take a look. Pretty standard kind of Hornet stuff. You know, they used, reused most of those assets. The cockpit, I think it's a little bit different. I'm going to have to do a comparison video at some point between the F7C and the Mark 1 and Mark 2. I, I keep getting that messed up because it's new. Let's go ahead and fire up the ship. All right, so that got fired up. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look down around this cockpit first. We have a pretty, pretty standard layout here. Buttons that don't do anything. And there's an exit ship button, some flashing buttons. Let's take a look over here. Those don't do anything. Open pilot canopy, open ladder. Open exterior, press to unlock. That's where that's at. I was looking for that last night. Over on the right side, I don't see buttons that do anything. That button, I thought it clicked. Um, engine on, engine off on the right panel over here. We do have an eject over here. And we have another button, power off button. So the rest are pretty benign. Uh, we do have two multi-function displays and that's it <laughs> for multi-function displays. Of course, you do have your HUD up here as well. So let me come out of the out of the ship for kind of an external view. Again, looks the ship does look a bit different from the Mark One. I, I I'm enjoying it so far. I haven't flown my Hornet in such a long time. And this is this is from a guy who used to fix F-18 Hornets, which is weird because that's this is a single engine fighter. The Hornet was a dual engine, but regardless of that fact, it, it just, I don't know, it looks more tough. It looks, it looks better, I think. Uh, overall, I think the designers and the aesthetic of this is very well done. Let me uh, lift up a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and retract the gear. You'll be able to see the, the wings do come out just like in the standard Hornet. That looks even better. I mean, kind of from a static point of view there. Yeah, so I, I do think at some point I, I do like the red light showing on the on the gun there. I'm going to have to do a video comparing the Mark one and the Mark two. I think uh, that may be the next planned video, but let's call for this hangar to open. We will hop back in the cockpit. I'm outside of Bygenie Point, just outside of Arc Corp. Waiting for these hangar doors to open. I'm going to go ahead and engage full throttle here. We'll do a burner shot. Hopefully won't die. And go. So full afterburner launch. 
Gonna buy Genie Point. Afterburner's still going. Oh, I'm blacking out. So that was a good, I don't know. 10 seconds, maybe? 7 seconds of burner in space? It is a little bit different sound when that, when the burner kind of kicks down a little bit. Throw on our cruise control here. So in space, let's do a speed test. Our SCM looks like to be 209. Look how fast this, this thing's going up to max speed. Pretty darn quick. And that appears to be 1,228-ish for max speed. And all, of course, that's all going to change with master modes, uh, of course. So who knows what it's going to be, but it should be interesting. Afterburner also uh, charged really quick in uh, just our default mode here. Balance power settings. Flying this thing around with some sun on the top over a cloudy arc corp. I like the blue on blue. It does look very nice. Um, what do you guys think of this ship? I think it looks fantastic. Quite honest. Um, but then again, I'm a sucker for Star Citizen and its aesthetic. And I kind of always have been, and maybe that's why I've spent way too much money on Star Citizen. But there we go. Falling away from Baijini. Should we go fly it around the city? Um, sure. So stand by. I'm going to go find my way to Arcorp. And we'll go fly it around the city. Then we'll go fly it around the moon. Maybe, maybe take a combat mission to kind of show off some of the some of the combat abilities of the ship. And hang tight. We'll be right back in Arcorp. All right, folks. Here we are coming down through the clouds of Arcorp and into Area 18. Notice the the bin nozzles here. They don't really do anything. It's just there for looks. That would have been cool if they did move and retract or, or kind of push in to, to show we're getting more thrust. No, with Afterburner, it just kind of makes a, a bigger light. Overall, movement is not terrible in atmosphere. I really have to fly the stock Hornet again to compare, contrast. Um, in, in, in a heavier atmosphere, the roll is pretty good. It does wobble a little bit, kind of like the other Hornets, but it is pretty darn maneuverable. I'll throw some, some up strafe in there. As we pass our Corp Tower and the headquarters there. I'll say this, it's fairly quick in atmosphere, at least here at our corp, and it's fairly quick to respond, especially when you're trying to correct your attitude, you know, with, with kind of a drift there, and then you throw some burner in there to, to straighten yourself out. So we'll do a quick loop here. Eh, got a little bit of pause at the top there. Coming back down, not too bad. From a first person perspective. First right now flying with mouse and keyboard. You see that adding the afterburner in there kind of helps to straighten out the attitude of the aircraft. Not too shabby. We'll go for a roll. Pretty good. Really, how it, how it handles in combat is the real test. So speaking of that, let's go ahead and head up into space. We will go find a moon. And I want to fly it around in, in a lower gravity. Because that's where your missions are going to be, realistically. And we'll see how it handles there. Notice, uh... It does keep climbing its speed, even though I'm going straight up out of our corpse atmosphere. So the, the speed element, at least right now, is pretty darn good. We keep gaining speed as we're going directly perpendicular to gravity's pull. 
and throwing a little boost in there, we get some significant speed gains. Uh, able to get out of atmosphere really quickly, so I'm already out and able to quantum. Let's find a moon and I'll be right back with you. Okay, folks, so here we are in a moon. We're at Lyria, and I'm going to throttle up to full speed. And get up to uh, zero, zero here, so I don't crash into anything. Hopefully, we will see. And it looks like, I mean, our speed just keeps on going up here in the moon. So the ancient performance is really good. Well over a thousand in our speed. Now we do have cruise control on. I'm going to. Oh, God, that dipped really low. Quick 180 with burner. And I mean, I'm I'd probably be blacked out. Burner's gone. Yeah, I'm probably black. Yeah, maybe. OK, now I have authority again. Lost my role authority there for a second. Interesting. Probably going to throttle back a little bit here. Just go a little bit above SCM. You see, I am redding out right here. Don't love that. That happens way too often in the game. Uh, just pull an insane amount of G's. Apparently, I don't have any after, even though I should have afterburner. That was very odd. So I'm hitting burner right now and it's not lighting up. So that's even though I'm probably going fast. Another spin here. Full engine power. Let's kind of go between these mountains. So it flies really well. Again, I've always loved the way the Hornet f has flown in this game. That's why I own a bunch of them. The only one I don't own is the tracker. They're coming around. So I, as I think this is mostly it feels like an interceptor craft because it is quick. You know, like like the F-14 was not necessarily the best air to air fighter or, or attack aircraft. It's kind of a plane designed around a missile that being the that being the Phoenix. See, I've lost my control authority again. Now I got it back. So it's probably because I was blacked out. But uh, the F-14 was really, really ridiculously ludicrous speed fast. And that was its main benefit was it, it it's an interceptor. There we go. Now we got the afterburner. Anyway, this this ship does fly really well in a moon atmosphere, especially with here at Lyria. And uh, from the cockpit, you see I have and guns there going. They don't have a ton of uh, ammo here uh, in in a balanced power scenario. They only have 18 shots for the size. <laughs> well, the size fours have 18. The size three has 18, which doesn't make any sense. And the size twos have 22. And they go pretty darn quick, but there's five of them. So that's quite a lot of firepower. If we bump up to what I normally dogfight at, somewhere around 50% laser. I'm still at 18 on the size fours. I gain one on the size twos and one on the size threes. Not really worth it. They they should recharge faster. And yeah, they're recharging faster. If we bump up full weapons, now we're at 21 on the size fours. 26 on the size twos and 22 on the size three. Of course, concentrated power, pretty good. And they recharge extremely fast. One thing I do want to try in this is uh, to throw some size four, uh, A4 DB, I think it's called the Gatling, the Crusader Gatling on there and uh, see how it handles with that. Because that would add some, some significant laser power to this, plus some uh, ballistic Gatling, so kind of best of both worlds. Um, and that one actually has enough ammo to make it useful. Let's do one more maneuver here. We'll come up, we'll just do a loop. Split us it. Come back down, kind of a, oh, blacking out there. Pull quite a few Gs. 
Afterburner helps. Okay, there we go. Let's let's go find a combat mission, see what it handles with this, and then we'll probably wrap up the video for this first look. Thanks for hanging with us so far. All right, folks, so here we are. We're back. We have a mission, and it's just an LRT. It was about the only thing uh, that was available tonight. Um, that wasn't like a, a type of a bunker mission. As you can see, we're here at a different moon. We're here at uh, Walla, and we are still able to maintain speed here. Uh, keep in mind, this is not a stealth ship. A uh, lot of IR, EM, uh, and cross-section here for this ship. So, let's go ahead and load up our missiles. We do have uh, size one marksmen's. We're gonna go ahead and fire those. If you're wondering how I'm doing MBG, take a look at my reshade videos. Shields hit. Oh, shields were hit. Of course they were, because countermeasures don't work the way they used to. Kind of just want to take out the, our neutralized target here. Not super concerned about his friends. The weapons go really quick here. Not a ton of battery. I wish there was more. Uh, but he's down anyway. Let's mop up his buddies. I'm going to increase my lasers a little bit. It is a wow, nice. It is a lot of firepower coming in all at once. Can't tell if that's a bad guy or not. Uh, I need to change my reshade to something different. We use the RGB version. There we go. Switch over to missiles. And they lock really quick. I got one off. Uh, you know, we're doing head-to-head -head jousting once again. Ooh, I like that shield effect. That was nice. And looks like he's gone. Did I get them all? Is it just a petty scout? Let's go find out. Because he's red. Hopefully I don't get a crime stat. Now remember, I'm no Avenger 1, and I'm not trying to be, so... <laughs> Got a missile off. Oh, there goes his buddy. Uh, this is still another advanced uh, night vision RGB mode, folks. Um, like I said, if you're interested in these, these RGB, uh, or these uh, reshade modes, because this is the normal mode, uh, please hit, hit up my reshape videos. So there we go. Mission complete. Burrito, I eat. Stay tuned. We're going to do the loadout section next, and then we will uh, land and wrap up the video. Stay tuned for that. Okay, folks, as you can see, we are back here. Uh, I took a little break in between shooting that video. I wanted to go over some loadout stuff and, and some quick comparison charts here between... The Anvil F7C Hornet Mark 1, which is in red, and the F7C Hornet Mark 2, which is in blue. And this is off of SC Ships Performances Viewer. It's kind of a mouthful to say. Um, but I did want to show you some differences between the two. Uh, I don't actually own an F7C Hornet. I have one as a loaner for my raft, I believe, uh, and maybe a different ship, but you only get one loaner. I own the Ghost, the Super Hornet, Heart Seeker, Heart Seeker, Breaker. Uh, yeah, I, I don't own the Tracker. Uh, I have a loaner for the regular Super Hornet as well. So with that being said, we can look at speed. The SCM speed of the Mark 1 is 182 meters a second. And for the Mark 2, it is 210 meters a second. And we saw that. I think I got 209 in the video. That should matter going forward, especially with master modes. Um, as I said, the ship felt faster when I was flying it, and it definitely is faster. That 30 SCM kind of makes a difference. 
especially when you're doing maneuvering and things like that. Uh, the top speeds are exactly the same though, because hey, it's the same engine. Maybe it's just more aerodynamic. I don't know. Uh, as far as propulsion, um, looks like the F7s, the Mark One with uh, afterburner is a, is a 27 rating, a 15 with the engine, and the the Mark Two is an 11 with a 19.8 rating uh, in forward thrust. The actually the Mark One beats the Mark Two in every category except SCM speed. So yeah, maybe it is aerodynamics, even though that's not a thing in Star Citizen. We don't have that type of model. Regardless of that, it looks like the rotation speed, uh, they are exactly the same between the, both ships. The resistances and stealth modifiers are the same. The shields are the same. Um, same type of component layout. The hull durability is different, though. So the Mark I at 3,500 body points, basically. Um, the Mark II at 4,600. So definitely the going to be the more durable of the fighters uh, making it again a little bit more of a defensive and interceptor fighter because it could take a few more hits uh, and it's a little bit speedier really the total health pool it, it's got a little bit more at 21.605 the mark 2 than uh, mark 1 at 21.530 but they're pretty much the same there and you can see that the mark 1 has 19 parts to 18 parts I'm not sure what that means um Let's look at dimensions and mass. The uh, the Mark One is, I mean, these guys are pretty similar. The Mark One is a little bit taller at 6.5, and that may just be with current pressure, just barely taller. Uh, the mass, the Mark Two is just a little bit lighter at 73K versus 74K. Uh, the inventory and cargo space are the same between both ships. Radar emissions, as we can see, the Mark II, a little more emission heavy. Um, overall, it has a bigger cross section. Not sure how, because they're relatively the same dimensions, but uh, it's got a bigger cross section. It's, it's definitely got a bigger IR signature, active and idle EM. Although, none of these, either of these ships are stealth, right? So, if this stuff matters to you and you want to try to put stealth components, okay, but you're still not going to be that stealthy. It's got a pretty high cross section, no matter what it is. Uh, the Mark II does have a bigger hydrogen fuel tank and 160,000 uh, pounds, I guess, uh, versus the Mark I at 120,000. Uh, it has a little bit more quantum fuel, but negligible enough to not really matter. Um, and it looks like the fuel flow per minute is much, much higher uh, in the Mark II, except for the maneuvering thrusters, which is higher in the Mark I. Uh, estimated flight time, because it doesn't burn fuel as fast, the Mark I is going to fly around long without needing hydrogen. Uh, the operating cost of the Mark II is significantly higher, uh, especially in hydrogen per hour and uh, fuel refuels. Uh, pilot weapons capacitor, um, higher value results in more ammunition results in more ammunition in laser and distortion weapons. These are exact same across the board there, and we have our the rest of the stats are the same uh, across the board. There's kind of a summary chart here with the blue being the Mark II, the red being the Mark I. Looks like the Mark II right here, it only kind of edges out in SCM. Everything else is pretty much the same except the Mark I. It's got better thrusters here as far as its stats go. So, interesting. And here's the metrics. Here's, here's the looks between the two vehicles. You can see that the Mark II, the Mark one much bulkier you see the engine sticking out further it's got a little bit of a different wingspan there where the weapons are located the backside here with the, with the engine and the, and the tail fin are pretty identical but the mark ii a little bit slicker a little bit less bulky a little bit more aerodynamic the engines are tucked in closer to the fuselage so pretty interesting there i, I really like this metrics chart now let's pop over to Urkel.games. Um, 
this is the standard Hornet right here. And I just wanted to show uh, with the Mark one, you do have some options here, right? Like you can put the ball turret on and things like that. Uh, the, this is the ball turret for this spacecraft, the C4 160 F thing. You can mount some size twos to, or you can put a, a gimbal on it and put some size uh size four on there kind of like a like a super hornet would have um size one components size one power plant size one coolers size one quantum drive notice the trend here uh, i believe the f7a mark ii is going to have some size two, maybe size two shields size two something uh but the quantum drive will stay size one so in Interesting on that, if we go to the Mark II, this is the build out I want to try out, basically. Uh, we can see I have a 337 or maybe some attritions here on the nose. I want to do a AD4B ballistic Gatlings on the wings to get some ballistics in there. Uh, and then the turret on the top, notice this is the C5173F ball turret, which is the one made for mark ii but the other turret will also fit on there but it does come with it so you're basically only going to have one i think you can do some some more ballistics in there whatever you want but uh since you only have two buttons to fire weapons uh i kind of like to do go between ballistics and and uh, repeaters personally so i would throw the two three uh, size three laser repeaters so that's three size three laser repeaters and two ballistic gatlings and that should pack a hell of a punch um Look at the missile difference. So there's eight size ones that come with the Mark II. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, with the Mark One, you get some size twos in there. So there is a missile difference, and maybe that's because it's a little bit bigger. As, as far as where you can put more missiles on there, um, but that's the trade-off, I guess, for the speed is you get less missiles. And these look like they're locked and they are bespoke. Uh, whereas you can change out the missile racks on Mark one so you can put size threes in there size ones in there uh these missile racks are locked on the Mark two with the mark two i also have uh fully upgraded everything like the shields are military fr66s the power plants are jets uh these are si so there's one size two power plant and one size is that correct huh? Have to go back and check but so two size ones on the mark one on the mark two a size two and a size one which makes sense because it's got bigger guns uh the coolers are still both i think you really need to mess with them but uh they're size ones and then of course the quantum drive i go with the voyage here kind of the most bang for the buck uh i would either recommend the voyage <clears throat> excuse me or an atlas so this website here is Urkel.Games. Um, yeah. It's got more whole hit points. It's faster. It feels like if, even though the, the picture y'all roll rate are the same, it feels like it flies better. It definitely looks better, um, but it holds less missiles. But it does have bigger guns. So you kind of got to figure what you want in this ship. Is it worth 170 bucks ish? No, that's up to you. But look uh, for the video I have that's going to come comparing the two, flying the two, probably multiple opinions. And uh, I think now it's time to wrap up the video with myself flying back to my GD point. Thanks for sticking around. Please stick around to the end. Like, subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you in the next video, guys. All right, folks, it is time to come in for a landing here at my Genie Point. I hope you enjoyed our adventure here at Art Corp. I sure did. I enjoyed flying this brand new fighter from Star Citizen, the F7C Mark II. I got to get used to just, I think we're, everybody will probably just call it a Mark II, eventually. Um, my thoughts on this ship. The speed of it feels really good. Um, I think it's the best part about the ship. To be quite honest, 
and I hope it doesn't get nerfed. I like the simplistic layout of the cockpit, but then again, I, I really have to start flying my normal Mark One Hornet more to get a better feel for that. I think. But honestly, I kind of like to know your thoughts about the ship. Have you flown it? Did you buy it? What do you think of it? It's it's certainly interesting. It, do I think it's worth it? Yeah, because I like this type of gameplay. I'm looking forward to master modes. I'm looking forward to slowing down combat, making it a little. I don't want to see the word harder, but. Harder, uh, more. I don't know if I'd say realistic because I don't think any of us know, but more fair, balanced. Yeah, I know it's probably not a popular opinion, but I don't love the tactics of the AI and the jousting and all that. It gets old and uh, hopefully Master Mills will lead to some increased better gameplay. With this ship, I like the size force. I don't like the amount of ammo like you get with them. I think that needs to get better personally, personally. But what are your thoughts? Do you like the ship? Do you like the color schemes? I'd like to know. Let me know. Uh, put a put a comment down below. And uh, as we well, I said I'd talk about the F7A Mark II. So there there is an event going on. I think it's called Overdrive. Uh, it's with Xeno Threat, I think. Or with Nine Tails. It's one of the two gangs. It, Stanton. But basically, there's going to be multiple events and you have to do all of the events uh, as they come out. Well, not as they come out, but at some point before Invictus. And if you own this Mark II, the F7C Mark II, and you have completed all of the challenges, which you pretty much need a group for, then you will get, I believe, a free upgrade token to the F7A Mark II as part of the CDF uh, reward bonus initiative thing that CIG is doing. It's not the F7A Mark One, which is a very rare ship and a ship I've never flown. I'd, I'd love to, but they just they don't sell them anymore. They're very expensive. Uh, but the Mark II should be a better ship all around. And if and when I do get that upgrade token, I will do another video on this ship compared to that ship. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I do plan to get it. Uh, yeah, so I guess we'll see you guys next time. Uh, I'm looking to make a video on the Santok Yai, and I'm also looking to do a, a comparison video between this ship and the Mark One. So look for those coming out in the future. And until next time, remember, if the fist don't get you, the lightning bolt will. Good night, Stanley.